Tesla's self-driving technology had made a major step, actually a few steps in the last few months. There's also going to be big announcement uh, and an event for investors on April 22nd. Um, that's where you know we're all expecting to Tesla really wow us, even though they already have even a critic like myself here to help me to talk about the self-driving uh, technology in the future and for Tesla in particular is Eli Burton in our weekly supercharged segment. So all of that is coming up next. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of unbiased electric car news. If this is your first time here, go ahead and click on that subscribe button so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, so normally I bring uh, Eli uh, here via Zoom, Skype, whatever you want to call it, but he had a his huge annual event for his te Tesla takeover trip, which I had an amazing time. We once again took over the largest supercharger in the US, and this time, for the first time I've been told, ever in the history of Tesla, uh, all 40 stalls were taken. That was absolutely amazing. Um, you can definitely follow me on uh, Instagram at e4electric and follow Eli at my Tesla adventure to see so many more pictures because it was such a fun event. So, but we did it in person um, because it, there was a sunset cruise um, that wasn't uh, didn't get to the sunset because of all the fog until the very very much the time of the sunset. But it was still amazing. So we ended up taping it on the top deck of the boat, but we we're riding them. So I'll share it to you in a second. But the trip was amazing. Um, as you can see, got in a little bit of trouble there. I love that picture. I haven't posted it on other social media yet, but um, I also made some friends. Yeah, this is a kind of almost a mascot for uh, for the uh, Tesla takeover events. Uh, this cat just hangs out with their owners, uh, their Model X, a very, very, uh, very cute ki kitty. I, I, I've made friends with it and I made more friends. Look at this. I named him Steven. You can also see that on my social media. I thought it was kind of a cool picture. And there's going to be so much amazing drone footage coming out of that event. It was just really, really cool. If you want to see all these pictures and more, um, follow me at uh, e 4 Electric on uh, Instagram and pretty much all social media. Uh, all right, so uh, let me get to our self-driving conversation with Eli. Before that, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Byton. Check out the all-electric SUV coming to the US and Europe next year, starting at only $45,000. Can you believe that? It could be yours uh, as long as you make a reservation because the reservation list is growing with every day. It is free, so why not do it? It takes like 30 seconds. Go to Byton.com or the link in the description of this video. All right, without further ado, uh, let's talk about self-driving features and, uh, um, and uh, other things that are kind of connected to this technology. So here's my conversation with Eli in Morro Bay, California. All right, we are on a beautiful cruise here as part of your amazing event for my Tesla adventure. And um, and it's a little chilly, I have to say, you know. But um, we're talking about self-driving cars today. Um, Tesla is considered to be either on top or on the bottom of that. As you know, right? Like people say Waymo's all way ahead of because their, their cars are riding around in Arizona, absolutely driverless. But that is kind of a mapped technology. Or Tesla that is completely artificial intelligence. You know, they don't really need to know what the 3D maps are or get the signals from this. Well, where do you stand on that? What do you think the, the better technology is? I think it is laughable to say that a technology that can only work in a very small sandbox environment based upon you know location mapping is ahead of an AI-driven technology that can deploy self-driving technology anywhere. Anywhere that it can see. Not anywhere that it's mapped, anywhere it can see. So I think I don't think many people actually believe Waymo is ahead. I think there's a lot of content out there that may be suggested that they are, probably sponsored by Waymo. But I, I, mean, I, don't, I don't think very many people are, are arguing with the fact that Tesla is the leader in deployable self-driving technology. Well, I think Especially for consumers. There is no consumer self-driving technology that exists out there right now that is anything like what Tesla is doing. Right, well, I, I think that's, in the, I guess that's what we're talking about, the school of thought, right? Yes, it is much harder to develop what Tesla is doing because it's artificial intelligence versus what Waymo is doing. But at the same time, what Waymo is doing works right now better simply because their cars are driving around without a driver. Well, here's the problem, though. What Waymo is doing is way more expensive. They're lying on underlying hardware that is much more costly than what Tesla is doing. Hardware. Yeah. And when you're tied to these hardware limitations, you have to deploy that car after car. It's very different than something you can push out with a software update. Uh, no, and, and to be honest with you, I don't even know which one is would be better, which one would be worse. Because on the one hand, you know, artificial intelligence is is one thing, but another thing is you're relying on infrastructure, which 
you know, if you look at 3D maps as infrastructure, right? Because that that then then we're talking about okay, is, is it is it better to have to rely on infrastructure, uh, or is it better to not rely on infrastructure? And I, and to honestly, I, I'm just going to wait and see who's going to do it better. Same thing with lighter or not lighter. Like you know, everybody else except for Tesla are using lidars, right? The technology, and you know, in addition to using cameras and radars, Elon said no way. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, do you think that, you know, to, to, to me, it's like, hey, why not you know, add yet another piece of technology that can help you uh, versus not doing that? Uh, what, do you think about, what do you think about lighters? So if you want to just look at it from more sensors is better, sure. But when you act in the real world where you have cost involved and you want to talk about something that you scale to 10 million vehicles, for example, like where Tesla's going to be in, in another half a decade, I think that although these companies that are using lighter may be slightly ahead right now, where Tesla is going to be and anybody else going down the true AI route, not only are they going to win with better performing technology, but it's going to be cheaper. And part of de de delivering a technology to the masses and the people at scale, cost matters. And I think I think going the I think he said it basically that using lidar is a crutch. I don't want to develop a technology that has a crutch, and he's okay with being a little bit behind in the short term to win the big game in the long term. Do you agree it's a crutch? I do. How so? I don't, I think where vision is going, we are going to get a, le a, a superhuman level of intelligence that relies on vision. We drive cars based on vision, and we're not great at it, but we're the best that exists so far. So when we're talking about making something exponentially better than us based on vision, that's fine. Well, vision is a funny thing, right? Because you can argue that radars, is vision or not. And, and Tesla is using radar, that's exactly, the thing. Right. It's not just it's right. not just actual video, yeah. they're also using video and radar. Right, you can argue LiDAR is sort of a different or maybe even a better version of radar that's more expensive. Um, and I think the biggest concern with a, a, LIDAR, a LiDAR is uh, that it doesn't perform that well in a fog or a sandstorm and so forth. Which are, which are the environments that you would hope something, like if you're gonna use another sensor that's not vision, you'd want it to work in an environment that vision fails. And that's one of the shortcomings of LiDAR that it doesn't solve the problem. It, it fails in the same place that vision fails, which makes it not a redundancy as much as it could be. You can argue that LiDARs are sort of a, a, a better version of radars that only work 95% of the time. So the question is... I think they're a nice redundancy. I think the problem is their cost. I think if they were similar cost to radar, then we wouldn't even be having this discussion. The reason why that there's a push against that and why Tesla and Elon isn't doing it is the cost. That's the problem. And the, the calculation he's making is the cost benefit doesn't make it worth using that technology. Yeah, if we go with cost, I'm not, right now I definitely would agree, but you know, just like with everything, all LiDARs, you know, getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, and by the time some of the other manufacturers that are gonna catch up and, and, and produce this self-driving technology, they will end up using it at very similar cost. Maybe, but right now, sonar and cameras are getting cheaper and cheaper, like, fat, I mean, yeah. they're getting to the, you know, $50 a camera, less than that. I mean, yeah. the price of cameras and sonar is getting unbelievably cheap, while LiDAR isn't. And if Elon is right, and that sonar, that, or the, that, that radar and vision is the way to go, then you will never get enough mass production in LiDAR to ever make that pay off. So the folks betting on LiDAR are hoping that a whole bunch of other people jump into this game. And if they're wrong, their technology will never be affordable. Versus cameras and radar have so many global applications for so many products, there's enough other industries of scale to drive down the price that it doesn't have to rely on just self-driving cars to do it. LiDAR has very limited applications that if the self-driving car thing doesn't jump onto it, I don't see a real path for them to get to the kind of scale to become affordable. Right, I mean, it's, it's kind of a catch-22, but yeah. okay, so. It is, it is. Yeah. And I think this is where we kind of have to just wait and see. We do. Um, I, I'm 50-50 on that. I, but okay, so let's, let's talk about something else, right? Um, you know, Tesla is just about to host an event for investors for, uh, for self-driving technology, which it looks like they're making a really major push this year, and it lo it's looking really, like, you know, I have not been a fan of autopilot for a long time now, ever since 1.0 came out, and I'm, I'm getting really excited about it again because they're finally making progress, um, and it's exciting, and it's really, like, I, I'm, I'm seeing it, you know, being out there and being very, uh, very much what we thought it was going to be in the, in the near future or distant future. Um, where do you think they're going to be by the end of this year? And do you think that their progress can only be so far as, you know, as far as the regulations? Uh, or, and do you think what the, the regulations should be, you know, loosened up maybe a little bit uh, um, in California, maybe other states? Where do you see the balance between the two? So I see by the end of this year, Tesla being at level three. 
an absolutely level three self-driving. And for, for those who don't know what the different levels are, level three autonomy is effectively freeway driving without human input. That's the translation. Now Tesla's already pushing out updates now that the current version of autopilot is detecting red lights and stop signs. And if you're going through a red light, if you're heading into a red light while in autopilot, it's not gonna stop, but it's gonna alert you and say yeah. that we saw it. So I do think we're gonna see level three autonomy by the end of the year. Level four is a much bigger hurdle. And not just from a software standpoint of effectiveness, that's where the regulators really get queasy. Now, thankfully, due to companies like Google and progressive states like California, California has been on board with the self-driving thing 10 years ago because Google did the lobbying. They convinced the legislator a long time ago to support this. So it's gonna be a very interesting transition nationwide. I think we're gonna quite literally have states that will have self-driving five, maybe even 10 years before other states are gonna allow it because states have enough autonomy to make these decisions. Now the federal government did step in and pass a law earlier this year. I'll be honest, I don't remember all the specifics of it, but as I understood it, it took some power away from the states to limit self-driving. So it seems that government is actually lining up on the side of progress for once. I don't, I don't know how this yeah, happened, Alex, but yeah. it seems yeah. like there's momentum behind this. There's both momentum, money, and the politicians seem to be behind supporting this technology. So um, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how this lines up with other automakers too. And maybe you can talk about this a little bit also because Biden is planning on pushing out their car in 2020. And their promise, as I understand it, is level four self-driving from the gate. Yeah. So I, I'm very interested to see what, how that's going to impact them if they're pushing out a car making this promise. How's regulation going to line up with that? Because they're, I mean, they're talking in the U.S. Well, right. I mean, obviously, they're launching first to China and the yep. regulations there is not as tight yeah. Here, yeah. as here. And, you know, um, I, if it's not going to be allowed, they're obviously going to limit the software to level three, most likely, uh, because that's going to be allowed. But I think uh, as far as China is concerned, I think that will be something that they'll be able to do at level four. And I'm, I'm kind of curious myself, to be honest with you, because that is a pretty major statement. And we're getting there, right? They're, they're producing the cars at the end of this year, whether anybody likes it or not, um, and definitely coming to the U.S. next year. So I, I'm looking forward to it. And, and I think it's going to be up to the regulators. Let's talk about something that, um, you know, the biggest limit, you know, the biggest problem I have that with the autopilot is the limitation that did not come from regulators. It actually came from Tesla. And you know what I'm talking about is the fact that you have to keep your hands on the wheel and eyes on the road. Yep. And, you know, my argument is always like, well, why don't you need an autopilot? You know, do you think that was a good decision for them to kind of uh, self, uh, self-limit self themselves on this? And when do you think they will be able to kind of uh, go back to where we don't need to have our hands on the wheel and eyes on the road? I think by the end of this year, when they push out true level three, that even removes any legal requirements, but most importantly, any liability requirements for having to do that. Because again, the true level three means no human put input necessary during the majority of driving, which is primarily freeway. I think by the end of the year, we're gonna see that. And yeah, look, I definitely find the notifications annoying. Every, every owner who uses autopilot a lot has figured out their way of giving just enough input to satisfy the system without going out of their mind, because a bit the notifications got really absurd, but the notifications got absurd in response to an unbelievable attack by the media that you even made a great parody video last April Fool's Day about, you know, if Elon Musk became CEO of Starbucks and there was a car accident and there was a Starbucks cup in the back seat. Yeah. So obviously Starbucks is to blame, right? Yeah. So like, I yes. mean, I mean, basically any time a Tesla was crashing, if the Tesla even had the feature, it must have been autopilot run amok. So, I mean, there was a pretty targeted, you know, mass media campaign against Tesla going after them for autopilot. So they took a really big and a step that was probably unnecessary, but they had to, to give themselves a shield against some of this unbelievably bad PR that they were getting that was completely unwarranted, completely foundless, and honestly was totally just fear-mongering, making people afraid of technology that's actually gonna save their life. Because we, we got to see the recent accident data on autopilots, and Tesla already has half as many crashes as the average car. It's half of that when autopilot's involved. I mean, the data proves it's already safer than humans. Right, I mean, but on another hand, there has been some accidents that were obviously, the autopilot was not able to keep the car uh, on the road, obviously was gonna crash the cars into the divider. That, now, a lot of them were because the markings on the road were in the sun and stuff like that, but nevertheless, there were some cases where you could say, I mean, I, just by looking at the footage, like, hey, listen, this is Tesla autopilot's fault. But at the same time, I mean, it's almost, it's what you just said right there is exactly why they're making you pay attention and keep your hands on the wheel. Because there's places like, like that's, a, that's, a, that's actually a case for what they did to make it so annoying and yelling at you because it, there's situations it can't handle. But at the same time, like I would rather uh, have, uh, have a, a, a big problem saying, hey, listen, you, if you, you have a choice. We either have you, you know, keep your hands on the wheel and eyes on the road or 
you don't have to but here you're just going to have to sign your life away and 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 and, and never tell anybody that if anything happens to you it's our fault look you completely take responsibility i'm somebody who's willing to take responsibility for my actions and i wish it would be that way but unfortunately most humans will check that box and they'll still sue tesla for it and create a huge bad event i'm look i'm with you i'm with you i wish it was that simple because i'm willing to take risks that other people are, but I'm also willing to accept the consequences for them. Yeah, that's true. Well, I mean, to me, you know, as I might be, you know, I'm shopping for a car, as you know, like in the next few weeks or months. And every time I'm thinking about Tesla, should I get an autopilot? And I go, no. Like right now, until they uh, remove that, to me, it is not even a feature. But if they were to remove that, that is a must have, absolutely amazing breakthrough feature to have. <laughs> so to me, it's like here or all the way there. But I hope but I hope it does happen by the end of the year because it does look like they're making some major progress. They are. I mean, they just pushed out, they just rolled out the feature of the automatic lane change and you can disable confirmation. I mean, Love this is that. level, exactly what, yeah, this is getting yeah, real yeah, close yeah. to that 2.5, three point level three autonomy. Yeah. It will now change lanes without the human confirming it. Yeah. Which that, I mean, that's a clue. That's a major action, by the way. Cha like looking at the cars around you, identifying where it's safe, and automatically changing lanes, all the way to the point of exiting the freeway. I mean, we are really close yeah, to level three. No, we are, time. and I think it's exciting. It's, it's, and yet, it's the second most exciting thing about it. I think the parking lot summit is is wow. Those um, videos blow my yeah, mind. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, last question: Where do you see uh, this whole thing going? Do you think uh, others are going to start catching up? Uh, do you think Tesla is just going to be absolute leader, or do you think everything's just going to be halted by regulators and it's just going to go as fast as the government allows? I think there's already enough momentum behind support of this from government and industry. Like again, Google started the wave on this 10 years ago. Thankfully, I think there's already enough support behind this technology that regulators are not going to be the roadblock. I think as soon as Tesla drops that level three, I think it's going to be word out to the rest of the automaker community that every car they sell that doesn't have that has a leg down on Tesla. I think they're serving main course downstairs. I think we should uh, go ahead and head and rejoin the rest of the uh, this this awesome. I mean, this is such an amazing uh, like events that you put out, man. Every time, it's thank you, man. It's uh, anyway. We're gonna put everything in the description of this video. As usually, you guys should just like show up one of these days, and a lot of them do. Like this was completely sold out, right? Yeah. In fact, some of the people who are here tonight found out about this event from your video. Yes, people do watch. And it's not just my mom who watches my videos. No, I, I'm, no. I'm excited about it. And that. Tesla owners still watch your videos. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is one more. That's amazing. Yeah, that is amazing, yeah. All right, as always, it's it's great to talk to Eli. Of course, I love doing it in person. As a matter of fact, that's how it all started. We ended up having so many debates that people said, why don't you do it in front of a camera? And, you know, sometimes we disagree more than we agree, and sometimes it's the other way around, but it's um, it's it's great to uh, to hang out with them. By the way, if you're in California, you got to attend one of these events. It's it's amazing. Uh, go to MikeTeslaAdventure.com or TeslaTakeover.com, whatever. Sign up for his newsletters. But mainly if you follow him on social media, you will get also really really good content um and don't forget we're doing this every uh, every wednesday uh, a topic every wednesday if you have a suggestion for what we should argue about go ahead and submit that we'll be more than happy to consider that don't forget to subscribe to my vip list our uh, weekly newsletter where i deliver some exclusive content offers and news that you don't see here on uh, this youtube channel or the website and a quick thank you to one of my newer patreons vic aiden thank you so much for contributing and supporting my independent youtube channel um, patreon is the only place where you can watch all of these videos live if you want to join, there's a description. Uh, there's a link in the description of this video, but essentially it's patreon.com slash e4electric. All right, guys, I will see you next time. And remember, don't forget, did I just screw that up? I'm going to try this again. All right, guys, looking forward to your comments. Other than that, see you next time. And remember to stay charged. Whew. <laughs>